Okay, I'm going to give you the secret to getting people to do whatever you want them to do. Imagine that kind of power. If uh, Imagine, if you will, if you could command people to do whatever you wanted them to do. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it. But first, I must tell you, it doesn't work on all people all times, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of people that you're never going to be able to get to do what you want them to do, okay? So you've got to have enough leverage with the, with the right people. They have to be the right people. You have to have enough leverage with them. If it's a prospective buyer, you have you have to you have to uh, put them through a series of um, of qualification steps that they have to go through to prove that they really want what you have um, to get leverage with them to be that trusted advisor, not just some salesperson. So your positioning is so vitally important because if you're just perceived as just another salesperson, then you're never going to get them to do anything. And if they do budge, they're not going to budge to the extent that you, you need them. They're not going to come in at the highest level that you need them to come in or whatever. So, you know, it, um, but I'm going to give you some techniques or, or just give you, I'm going to give you a story that does illustrate this. How about that? How about that? So, um, this is one of my greatest sales stories. And I hope you'll think about it. Um, I'm known as the Blue Jeans Millionaire because I'm the most average person you'll ever meet. And, Putting on a pair of blue jeans is dressing up for me. Right now I've got gym shorts on, t-shirt. That's how I like to dress. Sometimes around the house I just wear underwear. I mean, I'm just, just, uh, I am just a plain, ordinary, average person. I don't like dressing up or anything like that. I just, uh, when, in my early sales days, I was forced to wear a tie and sometimes wear a suit. I just hated every second of it. Put a tie around me, it restricts the blood flow to my brain. Or I, I just, I rebel against all that stuff. I don't like to dress up. That's why I call myself the Blue Jeans Millionaire. You know, you see me at an event, I'm in blue jeans. That's that's as good as it gets with me. And so that's that's my uh, my image, so to say. It's just, uh, um, but but my stepson and my stepson knew all of this um, when I when I married his mom. He was seven or eight years old. He grew up with me. He knows how rebellious I am. He knows how stubborn I am. And uh, when it came time to him getting married, uh, he knew that uh, five years or four or five years earlier at his sister's wedding, I was the one guy that didn't dress up. I, I wore a cheap suit where all the other guys wore tuxedos. Um, when, when his sister Tammy got married, I was just wearing a cheap suit. And so I stood out. And he didn't want that. He wanted me to dress up. A, he wanted me to wear a tuxedo to his wedding. And so nine months before he got married, he said, TJ, you know, I expect you to wear a tuxedo at my wedding. And I said, no way. I'm not going to do it. Sorry. I'll wear, I'll wear the same suit uh, to your wedding that I wore at your sister's wedding. And he goes, no, that's not acceptable. I, he goes, I want you to look just like the other guys. They're all going to wear tuxedos. I want you to have a tuxedo too. I said, nope, I'm not going to do it. Don't ever ask me again. I will not wear a tuxedo to your wedding ever, ever, ever. And, uh, and I thought that that was just going to be the end of it. Well, it wasn't the end of it. And uh, and, I'll, and the punchline is, I'll just give you the punchline now, I'm not, my timing as a, as, trying, as a comedian or whatever sucks, but the punchline is I did wear, I, got the, I, I did wear a tuxedo to his wedding. Nine months later, there I am, I've got all the pictures to prove it, he's got them all hanging up on his wall, there I am with his father and, and uh, his wife's father, and we're all wearing tuxedos. So how did that happen? How did he get me from that point of saying, well, first of all, he had leverage over me, okay? I love him, okay? I love him. He's my stepson. And and I love him dearly. And and uh, one of the most important people in my life. And so he had that kind of leverage with me. You can't, you know, if you don't have any leverage with, any, with somebody, you can't get them to do anything. And, and again, with salespeople, when we're talking about sales, to be perceived as just a salesperson, oh my God, there can there can be no worse thing. People don't respect salespeople. They don't appreciate them. They hang up on them. 
this the whole sales profession has such a bad meaning to it a nasty odor to it if you will nobody respects or admires a salesperson uh, so you have to become that trusted advisor that expert if you will not a salesperson in a traditional way you have to kind of disguise that and um, and you have, to, you, have, you, have, you have to have good positioning here. That gives you leverage. People want to do business with a trusted advisor, with an expert, with a professional, with somebody who has, you know, has the goods, with somebody that they have respect for. Um, so the relationship factor and the positioning factor are everything. If you don't have that, you're never going to be able to get anybody to do anything you want them to do. And and if, and and you're always going to be frustrated. You're always going to be frustrated because people are going to say no to you. They're not going to return your phone calls. They're going to treat you poorly. They're going to hang up on you. Yada yada yada. When your positioning is good, when you have that kind of leverage, and when you run your prospective buyers through a series of steps that ultimately lead them to you when they are ready to buy, so that so that they, that's you know that's the way I do things. Uh, the only people that I talk to, unless it's a serious customer service issue, because I will, I will step in on those deals all the time. Well, all the time. Like I have so many of them. Oh man. Oh my God. No, no. But, but on, on those kind of deals, uh, I will step in. But other than that, and even those deals have to be scheduled. Those are appointments that have to be scheduled with me. I don't just call somebody up. Um, and you shouldn't either. If you're an important person, again, it's positioning, not just calling up prospects. You've got somebody else doing that for you. Well, I don't want to spend that kind of money. That seems foolish. That seems that seems complicated. Yes, yes. It's all part of the whatever you want to call it. I call it the dance. It's all part of the dance. Because even though I am just a normal, average, regular Joe kind of person, um, uh, I don't want my prospects thinking that, uh, to, you know, I, I, so it's all about positioning. Now over that nine month period, get back into, get back to my story and I'll put a cap on this things. Um, Chris was smart enough, a very smart guy. He knew that once I said, no, I am not going to wear that tuxedo to your wedding. Don't ever ask me again. I'm not going to do it. So he was smart enough not to ever do that ever again. Instead, he worked on me. I don't know if he had this as a plan of his or whatever, but he is a smart guy. He knew that he just could, he knew that the more he got in my face and said, you know, I expect you to wear a tuxedo to my wedding, he knew I was just going to become more resistant to it. And in the end, it was going to lead to a big, huge fight, and I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to do it. I'm very rebellious, especially back then. This is 20 years ago. I was, I was even, I was way more rebellious then than I am now. So, so he just kept working me, kept coming at it with different angles and, you know, kept just, just gent, gentle pressure. What we do in marketing with our follow up campaigns, uh, this, I call it the, the drip technique, you know, or the Chinese torture treatment method. Um, you know, we're just little, you know, you're staying, you're following up, and it's all soft sell kind of thing. You're not hard pressuring. You're you're very altruistic in your methods. You know, I remember what finally got me in the end. First of all, he was just so persistent, and but he was he was coming at me in friendly. Look, I know you're not going to wear a tuxedo to my wedding, you know, but but would you just consider this? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Can we just talk about it a little bit? No, we can't talk about it. You know, but then, but then it's just kept working at it, kept working at it. He had the leverage, he had the positioning. So that's the, those are the two key essential, the relationship factor was there. Um, you know, um, and, and so with that leverage came a lot of just, just, he was determined to get me to do this. And he just kept working it. Kept working it, working it, working it, working it. Talked to my wife, had her working on it too. You know, and he talked to his mom, and he said, you know, help help me with this thing. So she was kind of working on me a little bit. He was working on me, and he just wouldn't let me go. And then he had me. And then finally, I remember what sealed the deal. Finally, it was just a question that he said. But this was after he had been working on me for months. 
you know, trying to convince me that this was the thing. Just like you're trying to convince your prospective buyers that what you want them to do is give you money for whatever you're selling them. You know, uh, trying to step it up, trying to take it to another level, trying to give you more money. Um, he just kept working it, working it, working it, wouldn't let me go. When it had, had his mom working on me too at the same time. So, oh my God, she's got a lot of, believe me, my wife has a lot of leverage on me, a whole bunch of leverage on me. And so, just working it, working it, beating me down, beating me down. And then he got me to admit that really, wouldn't it be nice? This is that, this is coming after a long process of just wearing me down, so to say, which was what we do with follow up marketing. What we do, we do it in an altruistic, you know, kind of, kind of way, you know, um, we're not, we're, we're, it's, it's all more soft selling, but enough, enough soft selling becomes hard sell after a while. And, um, and, and it has that cumulative effect. And um, finally got me to realize, he got me to admit that it might be kind of nice to experience what life would be like to wear a tuxedo once in my life. Because I was telling him, I was telling him, look, you'll get me in a tuxedo when I die. When I die and you put me in that coffin, you can dress me up in a tuxedo and you can come to my funeral and you can, there I'll be in that coffin, dressed up in a tuxedo, there I'll be. There's my tuxedo. You want me in a tuxedo? Wait till I die. Well, he got me to admit then that it might be kind of nice to experience it for once in my life what it might feel like to wear a tuxedo before I die. And then he got me to admit that uh, that ultimately it might be kind of nice if uh, if I was sort of dressed up. Uh, do you want your grandkids, your great grandkids, uh, you know, push and put, you know, seeing a pit? Who's that guy wearing? You know, whatever, you know. He, anyway. He got me. And you can get your people too. You can get people, certain people, to do whatever you want them to do, but it's a process and you've got to work on them and you can't take no for an answer and you've got to build the position in the relationship factor and you've got to try a lot of different methods. Well, the, the smartest thing about follow-up marketing is you come at them different ways and you just keep that constant pressure on. So hope something I've said makes a difference. We're all trying to get people to do what we want them to do. And and being a salesperson is the worst position you can possibly have. You know, and chasing after people. You want people that are setting appointments for you, opening the door for you. You want systems and processes that bring the best people to you that you know the people that are searching for what you have to offer and all that kind of stuff. So um Hope, hope something here has helped you. I, I hope you benefited from this. I hope you'll think about my story. And if you're one of my clients, uh, thank you very much. And you know I'm teaching you how to do all of these things that we've talked about with positioning and, and having people set appointments for you and um, structured selling processes uh, uh, that include a lot of follow-up. If you're not one of my clients and you want to see what we're doing, uh, click on the link below. And thank you very much.